Hi friends, welcome to the channel. If you've never seen my face before, I'm Olivia and you can consider me your fragrance fairy godmother. So the Sephora sale ends in two days. I contemplated whether I wanted to record this video or not because it feels like a little too little too late, but I thought, okay, we have two more days left. Coming in clutch with some recommendations that you can pick up at the Sephora sale on sale. And today I specifically tried to suggest some fragrances that are going to be good for the remainder of spring and our upcoming summer. So if you like Sephora, if you like saving a little money, and you like perfume, you're in the right house today. So sit down, grab a snack, have a little drink, and let's get rolling! I'm gonna start off with our most budget-friendly options out of this list, and that's going to be some good body mists. Starting off with Mango Mood by Fleur. So I actually just saw on Instagram that Fleur is going to be coming out with some new body mist, and I'm super excited for it, for one, because I found the Fleur body mist to smell way more expensive than any body mist that I have tried. They smell like designer fragrances, and honestly, Fleur is a pretty chic brand, so I expected nothing less, but specifically Mango Mood has my heart as of lately. Now to me, this is a super juicy, mango-forward, fruity version of La Via Belle. It's also slightly reminiscent of Luminous from Bath & Body Works, but I find this one to smell much higher quality. It's a mango scent without smelling too candied, so you have some pink pepper that gives it a little bit of spiciness in the beginning, as well as a strong dose of jasmine, and a little bit of a sugared patchouli in the base that gives it a little bit of grit and a little bit of earthiness, making it smell very grown up. So for a body mist, this is definitely a good buy. I personally like to go crazy and I will put on the Luminous Lotion, I will put on La Via Belle, and then I will top it with this during the day and I smell so good. And next up on the list, of course, we cannot forget about Sol de Janeiro. And this is actually a recommendation from my brother who just texted me the name of the fragrance yesterday and then after several hours followed up with, yeah, I liked it a lot. Great. Specifically, I'm talking about Chirosa 68. And this one is going to be similar to Cloud by Ariana Grande, but I find that Cloud has somewhat of a unisex touch to it, and there is a bizarre little note of slightly burnt plastic smell, which in a way, I don't dislike. I finished an entire bottle of Cloud. I like it. Talk to your mama about it. But this one, in contrast, does not have the burnt plastic sort of smell and is much more fruity and sweet and airs a little bit more on the girly side. So this is just fresh and uplifting without smelling too juvenile. And that one would be good for hot weather, but as of lately, California has been very back and forth. We have a day that is 85 degrees, followed by a day that is cold and rainy. So if you have a day in spring, that it's a little bit more cool, I would reach for Shirosa 59. Now let me dispel the rumors that were going on online that this causes spider bites. No. It seems like someone was just trying to stir up a little bit of drama, but I haven't had any sort of problems with this one. And this one is quite a bit different than a lot of the fragrances in their line because this one isn't overly sweet. This one is a creamy sandalwood and vanilla with a little bit of a powdery iris touch. And I got the body cream and I like that it is thicker than the rest of the body creams because I have very dry skin and it layers with so many different fragrances. If you need something that's a staple, that is a surefire bet that you can put over top of nearly any fragrance in your collection, this is a safe bet. Woody, creamy, warm, slightly sweet, and a little bit powdery. Now let's move on to some of my designer recommendations. I'm gonna start off with two that have been around for a bit, but I feel like they don't get as much love on these platforms as they deserve. Starting with Prada Candy. So although this fragrance is called Candy, I find the name to not fit the fragrance whatsoever because although this has notes of caramel and vanilla, I found the sweetness to be pretty minimal. There is a little bit of sweetness, but this is predominantly a powdery, musky fragrance. It's warming and cozy and super comforting, and the powdery notes come off a little bit more like iris. So if you like Glossier U, but you want something with a little bit of a warm, sweet edge, I think you would like this. Now this is one of these fragrances that when you smell it on paper, it smells like nothing. It smells like nothing, but when you put it on your skin, in the beginning I wasn't sure about it, but as it dried down, I just kept going back to it, 
and I would smell it every time I was in Sephora until finally last year my husband bought it for me for my birthday because he was like, listen, I'm so sick of you smelling it and not buying it, so I'm gonna get it for you. That powdery touch comes off like a really high quality vintage makeup face powder and just draws back some nostalgic memories without smelling too vintage. Speaking of vintage, this next fragrance doesn't get talked about a whole lot because this does come off a little bit vintage in my opinion, but if you enjoyed the original version of Angel by Mugler, I think you need to try this one. This is L'Interdit Rouge Ultime. So this is an absolute white floral bomb in the beginning. You have orange blossom, you have neroli, you have jasmine, you have tuberose. They're quite thick and robust but then are softened with a little bit of cacao. And what I like about this one is they didn't really try to sweeten it up too much because you have tobacco, you have vetiver, you have patchouli. So this is a dense white floral with a little slight bit of a gourmand edge, but then a little bit of grittiness. So this is vintage with a little bit of an edge. I imagine an older woman who takes no shit. She takes no shit and she dresses fabulous every day and she smells immaculate, but she is not here to please anyone but herself. And the last designer fragrance that I've been loving on lately, which I didn't think I was gonna say because in the beginning I wasn't impressed, but then once it got onto my chemistry, I really started liking, is Burberry Goddess. This is undoubtedly a vanilla fragrance. You have vanilla, you have vanilla absolute, and you have vanilla caviar, so we have three different kinds of vanilla coming to play in this. But this is a fresher take on a vanilla because you have a lavender and you have a ginger. So you have something that's a little bit aromatic and something that's a little bit tart and spicy and gives it a little bit of zip and a little bit of zing in the beginning. A lot of vanilla fragrances tend to be quite creamy, a little milky, rich, and very gourmand, but the aromatics in the beginning keep this from going too much in the creamy territory and keep it nice and bright and uplifting. Although I do think it's a little bit expensive for what it is because there's a lot of good vanilla fragrances out there, this is a compliment getter. Every single time I wear this fragrance, somebody is like, oh, you smell so good. But grudgingly at first, because I was like, this is just a vanilla fragrance. But I came to understand the magic after wearing it quite a few times because it is magnetizing. I lied, I just wanna sneak one more designer in there because this is a newer one from the Flower Bomb collection and I don't know about you gals, but I definitely was a Flower Bomb girly back in the day. I was a ride or die stan. So this is their brand new Tiger Lily. And I find this one to deviate the most out of all of the fragrances from the original. Now this one is definitely going to go more into the summer category because we have a coconut milk, we have a mango, which would layer very nicely with the aforementioned Fleur fragrance. I will say that this one is a little bit predictable. It is a tropical summertime fragrance. But I like that it's not overcomplicated. It's floral without being too intensely floral for those of you who don't care for floral. It has some fruitiness, it has some creaminess, and it has some sweetness. It's just an easy grab. Do I think it's mind blowing? No. Do I think that the original is better? Yes. But do I like this one? I do. But if you do have Alien Goddess already, I would find it a little bit redundant because this is already a tropical vanilla coconut fragrance. The other one just has an added note of mango. And lastly, we're going to move on to some recommendations I have from the more niche brands at Sephora. And you know I have quite a few because this is the area in which I shine. Starting off with Kayali Eden Sparkling Lychee. I think a lot of people were pressed about this release because they said, this is something that you could get at Bath and Body Works. And although I can definitely see where they're coming from, I like this as another easy reach fragrance because it is just happy. It is uplifting, it is sweet, it's girly and bubbly, and I like it, okay? There's definitely something very reminiscent of a 90s fruity shampoo, so it does give me the nostalgia factor. So imagine you combine that with a sweet, bubbly, sparkling rosé. We have the tanginess from the lychee, as well as a little bit of syrupy, sweet, yet slightly green quality from the black currant, as well as some really delicate and girly sheer florals in the way of rose and violet. And there is a little bit of warmth in the base coming from some sugar amber and a little bit of sandalwood. 
This is one of those fragrances that I throw on when I'm in a little bit of a poopy mood and I just want to turn my day around and I want something that just makes me feel a little bit lighter. But if you're more into the fresh and clean vibe, which I personally love to wear to work, so that way I don't offend anyone when I'm doing their hair, I'm reaching for Salt Air by Skylar. How many times do I have to tell you guys about this before you try it? It is so good. This smells like a breezy day off of the ocean. It's a little bit cold outside and you are drying laundry on the line. It smells clean and fresh, but it also smells very watery and sheer and doesn't really have much sweetness for those of you who are not into the sweet vibe. It's got that effortlessly cool, clean girl aesthetic, kind of that bohemian girl that hangs by the beach that always looks perfect but doesn't really try to, that's what this smells like. And if you're into the clean minimalistic effect but you want a little bit more of an artful, maybe a little bit of a cottage core edge, we're going with Naked by The Maker. At first I found this to be super similar to Glossier U, but as I wore this, I noticed that this has a lot more spice, a lot more earthiness, and a lot more green facets to it. It still has that signature musky powderiness and that pink pepper that you're going to get from Glossier U, but over time, that formula has become so weak and so uninspired that now we have better options. This is definitely a better option. This reminds me of one of those cute gals that lives in the forest and forages her own food and makes her own cosmetics and she's got beautiful curly brown hair. It sparks an image in my mind and that's what I kind of think of. Just an effortless, artful, clean, yet a little bit earthy, a little bit more interesting. Next is Lucia by Toka. You guys know how much by now I love a fig fragrance, and this is a fig that leans a little bit more on the green side, so you're getting something that's a little bit leafy and a little bit vegetal, very springtime, fresh and dewy. You can almost smell a salted sea breeze wafting in the background. There's a little bit of natural, minimal sweetness, but not overpoweringly so. But then in the base, it dries down to have a bit more earthiness coming from some cedar wood and tobacco and vetiver. So it starts off fresh, crisp, green, dewy, a little bit of sea breeze. Then in comes a little bit of sweetness from that fig, the actual pulpy fig itself, and then dries down to have an earthy, woody, effortless sort of feel to it. And for my sweet citrus lovers, we're going with Sunflower Pop. This one will really wake you up in the morning because you have some super juicy tangy notes in the beginning. You have mandarin, you have bergamot, and you also have a zippy passion fruit. You also have the note of Bellini that's going to give it this effervescent, sparkling sort of feel. It's sweet and tangy, bubbly and fresh, but then dries down to have a nice bit of muskiness. And for my rose lovers, there is a new rose fragrance on the block that is so good, and that is Pear Jam by Net. This smells like a really, really high quality rose water that you would use on your face. Almost has a little bit of a vintage touch, but there is quite a bit of jammy sweetness coming from some pear, there's some black currant, but then there's a sneaky little patchouli in the base that is quite dominant, but gives it more of a fresh, earthy feel as opposed to dark and damp and dirty, because I know patchouli can be a little funk sometimes. This one is not. It's the perfect balance of sheer florals meets fresh earthiness, not damp, dirty earthiness, and a little bit of fruitiness that smells very natural. It has pear, it has raspberry, it has black currant, but none of them smell candied or too overpowering. They're just a nice little topper. So if you like the scent of rose water, that's a good choice. And lastly, we're going to finish up with one that I think is quite an acquired taste, but what would this channel be without a little bit of weirdness? And that is Lit by Five Cents. And this right here is a photorealistic marijuana scent. But I don't want you to think of dirty, charred, cheap, 
burnt weed, I want you to think of a fresh marijuana bud that smells very citrusy, super aromatic, very green, and a little bit punchy. It does dry down to have a little bit of smokiness in the background, but definitely not that noticeable for those of you who don't like a charred sort of feel. And there's this slight astringent-like quality that comes with a marijuana scent that really livens up the nose and is something very interesting to wear. Not a lot of people are reaching for marijuana fragrances, so you will definitely smell unique, but it will not make you smell like you just smoked a fat tube. Okay? Rather, that you work in a really luscious herb garden. But for those of you who are not really into green fragrances, this doesn't lean too far in the green territory because it has a really delicious note of a juicy, sweet blood orange. So there's a little bit of sweetness to balance. So I hope you guys don't mind that today is going to be a little bit of a quick video, but I just wanted to keep it lighthearted and fun and bring in some good energy for spring and summer. So the Sephora sale does end in a couple of days, but if you were on the fence of any of these fragrances, I say go for it, and if you don't like it, you can return it. There you go. Thanks for joining me, friends, and I'll catch you next week, Saturday, 10 a.m. PST. Be here or be square. And until then, take care of yourselves, my friends.